This lesson is about electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves consist of electric and magnetic fields. They do not require a physical medium through which to travel. This means that they can travel through a vacuum. And unlike mechanical waves, which can be transverse or longitudinal, electromagnetic waves are transverse only. Here's a video clip that shows and describes electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy that propagates through space as oscillating waves that have electrical and magnetic components perpendicular to one another. The first thing we'll talk about is polarization. Polarization is the filtering of light based on the orientation of the wave. Being a transverse wave, light can be oriented vertically, horizontally, diagonally, literally an infinite number of orientations. And light from something like the sun or a light bulb comes at us in all different orientations. Some light is vertical, some is horizontal, some is diagonal. You can use a polarizer to eliminate all but one of those orientations. And this diagram shows that. We have vertically, horizontally, and diagonally oriented light going into the filter and only vertically oriented light coming out. You may have polarized sunglasses that reduce glare. This is how they work. You may have been to a 3D movie. This is how 3D glasses work. One of the lenses allows light of one orientation to pass through. The other lens only allows light of a different orientation to pass through. And when you get two slightly different images, one in each eye, your brain puts those together and gets a 3D image out of them. Here's a diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum. We often refer to electromagnetic waves as light. You can see in this spectrum that light or what we would call visible light, is really just a tiny little sliver of the entire spectrum. The other types of electromagnetic waves range from gamma rays, having a very high frequency and short wavelength, to radio waves having a very long wavelength and small frequency. We'll spend a lot of time in class practicing how to read this chart. When a wave reaches a boundary between two materials, there are three basic things that can happen. The first is absorption. That is, the electromagnetic waves are taken in by the atoms of the new medium. Another thing that can happen is reflection. That is, the electromagnetic waves can bounce off of the new medium. The last thing that can happen is transmission. This is when the electromagnetic waves travel past the boundary into the new medium. I don't want you to get the impression that only one of those things can happen. In fact, it's possible for all three of those things to happen at the same time. So some of the energy would be absorbed, some of the energy would be reflected, and some of the energy would be transmitted. In this lesson, we're going to focus on reflection. A lot of what you need to know about reflection is pretty intuitive. We use mirrors all the time, and I think we have a pretty good idea of how reflection works. But you will learn a couple things here that are new to you. Let's draw a diagram of a reflecting ray of light. So this horizontal line represents some reflective surface. And here is a ray of light. Instead of drawing squiggly lines, to represent the transverse waves that are electromagnetic. We just draw a straight line and we put an arrowhead in there. We don't always put the arrowhead at the end because we don't want our diagram to get cluttered, but we do need that arrowhead to show which way this ray of light is traveling. Since this ray is striking the surface, we call this the incident ray. To be incident upon something is to strike it. And we want to be able to describe the direction of this ray and down to the right just doesn't cut it. 
there's a lot of other rays that would also be down and to the right. And so what we want to do, just like we did with vectors, is describe the direction of this ray by describing an angle. And for reasons that will become clear later on, we're not going to just measure the angle between the ray and the reflective surface. What we're actually going to do is draw a line perpendicular to the reflective surface right where the incident ray strikes it. And we're going to call this line a normal. Remember normal force? We describe normal force as a force that is perpendicular to the surface. Same thing here. This is the normal. Now this is an imaginary line. This isn't a ray of light. We're just going to use this so we can measure an angle. The angle we care about is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. And we're going to call this theta i. This stands for angle of incidence. Now you probably won't be surprised when I show you the reflected ray. This is the part that's very intuitive. Just like we measured the angle of incidence, we want to measure the angle of reflection. I think it's pretty obvious from the diagram, and I think this is what most of you would expect anyway. If we measured theta i and theta r, we would find out that they are equal. And this is actually so important that it has a name. This is called the law of reflection. The incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. You can see in this demonstration that no matter what I make the incident angle, the reflected angle is always exactly the same. There are actually two types of reflection. The first is what you normally think of when you think of reflection. We call this regular reflection. You can see that the incident rays that are striking the surface are parallel to each other, and so are the reflected rays. This is exactly what you get when you look at a plane mirror or any other surface that produces an image. The other type of reflection is called diffuse reflection. Now we actually encounter this reflection far, far, far more often. Diffuse reflection is happening any time you can see an object. Literally any time you see an object, diffuse reflection is happening. The way that we see things is that light from a light bulb or the sun reflects off of the object, bounces off of the object, and that light goes into our eyes. Look around the room. Anything that you look at, you can see because of diffuse reflection. Take a look at the diagram. The incident rays that are going to strike the surface come in parallel. Each individual ray reflects according to the law of reflection. That is, the incident angle and the reflected angle are equal. But since the surface isn't flat, the reflected rays go off in all different directions. That's why you don't see a reflection, you don't see an image when you look at the piece of paper that you're taking notes on. But you can see the piece of paper that you're taking notes on because some light is reflecting off of it and going into your eyes. Here's a demonstration of regular reflection. No matter what angle we set these at, they're parallel coming in and they're parallel going out. This would produce a reflected image. Here, the surface is uneven. The incoming rays are parallel, but the outgoing rays are kind of all over the place. 